Hey guys, today we're going to do another installment of ICF True Costs, where we're going to compare it using my very rudimentary metric of a 4x8 wall framed with high quality wood framing, uh, 2x6s, zip board, foam insulation, and um, against the same square footage of ICF. Um, full disclaimer, uh, because a lot of times people watch my older videos and they, I don't explain this. Um, you're gonna have to do some of your own due diligence. This is a rudimentary metric. Um, I, don't, I don't include rebar. Um, reason I do that is because on a typical 2,500 square foot house, you're gonna have two to 3,000 in rebar, roughly, depending on you know layout of walls and stuff. Two to 3,000, and that's nationwide, every market. Seismic zones, wind zones, everything. When you go into wood framing, you have something uh, called strapping, Simpson stuff. Um, typical house, you might have $500, same size, in Greene County, Missouri, where I live. Uh, you go to Dolphin Island, Alabama, and uh, you might have $8,000 in straps to you know pass all your codes. You go to a seismic zone, same thing. So because I don't know where you live, I can't control what your codes are gonna be for the framing, you should know you need to do that research for yourself and factor that in. So I also leave the strapping out on the framing. So that's why I leave the rebar out, is to try to keep it as apples to apples as I can. Um, obviously all the foundation under the wood frame wall would exist anyway. So we are just factoring wall to wall. And uh, we've been doing this since I believe the spring of 2021. And the prices have been all over the board for lumber. The prices have creeped up about 25% over that time for concrete and ICF. They've been a lot more steady, but they have increased by quite a bit. So we will go into what our last one was back in March, what our highs were, and what they are now. <clears throat> and it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to watch it go. But um, before we get into the actual metric... The lumber futures, that's a pricing index that is uh, based on 1,000 board feet of random dimensional lumber, 2x4s, 2x10s, whatever, 1,000 board feet, randomly costs this much. Um, in the pre-COVID era, $350 was about what 1,000 board feet was running. The high point back about a year ago right now was 1720 so I mean it was like five times. Um, increase. That's why lumber was insane. That's when ICF and wood framing were on par. Um, so in the spring, we were back down to 762, which was the lowest we had seen. We actually had a massive dip, um, <clears throat> probably to all the interest rate increases and thinking that it was going to completely grind building to a halt. Back in May, we actually got down as low as 344, so right back down to COVID levels. Right now, I'll show you, we are sitting at around 520, and it looks like that is going to be pretty steady through the end of the year, if nothing changes. So given all the other inflation, 520 is probably pretty close to where we would have been, you know, with uh, pre-COVID. So lumber has really tanked, guys, which is, I guess, good. If you're, even if you're building an ICF house, you need a lot of lumber. So it's good news that lumber is cheaper. Um, so... Knowing that, we'll get into um, the wood framing first. The way we do that is four studs, a top plate, a bottom plate, foam insulation, and a two by six wall with zip board and enough zip tape to go around that board. A roll of zip tape will do about six boards. Uh, it'll actually do about eight, but when you factor in windows and doorways, you're going to get about an average of six boards coverage with a roll of zip tape, so we divide it by six. That's just to give you where my numbers come from. Right now, zip is at thirty-four fifty a sheet, which is considerably better than the seventy-four dollars it hit <clears throat> this time last year. Um, but it's actually a little worse than March. It was twenty-five bucks a sheet in March, which was the lowest I had seen since twenty nineteen, when I was paying about eighteen bucks a sheet. So um, you know, it's still about double where it was pre-COVID, um, about ten bucks up since spring. I'm not really sure why. Dimensional lumber, the two by sixes, are only four dollars and ninety eight cents right now, which is the lowest I've seen in three and a half years. Um, March they were seven dollars, and at the high point they were fifteen. So we are at one third of what they were at the high point this time last year. Um, zip tape is exactly the same. It's 
pretty much just been sitting about 32 bucks a sheet or a roll. So we're factoring in about $6 per sheet to tape it up. Um, same as last in March and about a dollar cheaper than we hit at the high when the rolls were like over $40. Um, insulation is still kind of the thing that's keeping those wall prices up to get anywhere close to the R values um, of ICF and the performance of ICF. You have to use spray foam. You're going to talk to me about bats and everything else. We're not talking about the same thing and that's fine. But um, to do spray foam right now, literally, um, Jerry down in Nashville, my buddy that's building a lot of really cool ICF pools, who's in the spray foam business, who, shout out, saved my bacon in Oshkosh this weekend. We would have had a really bad week without him. But I was just with him this week, and he confirmed to me that it's absolutely stable at very expensive at about $2.85 a square foot. So you're at about $91 to fill that 4x8 um, sheet with, um, with foam insulation. So back in March, we were at $161 for that wall. Randomly, we're exactly the same right now because the 2x6s went down by $10 total and the zip board went up by $10. So we're still at $161. The high point this time last year was $74 zip, $15 studs. We were at $240, which was exactly on par with ICF and concrete, which was a pretty big anomaly because the quality difference made it a no-brainer to go ICF. So that gets me to the ICF now. Everything's been basically stable all year. ICF blocks are still sitting in the ballpark of $5 a square foot um, delivered, depending on where you are. You know, I work with Roast, ICF, and Supply, um, obviously a lot. They, they fulfill all my pool kits uh, and ship them out, as well as supplying tons of people. Um, primarily, they use Fox Blocks. They also deal, it's kind of a random thing. Most guys are pretty brand specific, but because of the way we build pools, um, Fox is still in develop, redevelopment in their one sided form. So we also carry Build Block and Nudura. So I've got a pretty good idea of costs. Build Block is basically right there with Fox in that $5 foot range. Nudura is very close to that as well, but even though they ship easier because they're in a bale instead of a cube, they ship from further away for most of us. Um, obviously in Canada, they have a big plant that makes them. They're building a plant in Texas that'll probably help, but right now it's Atlanta and Canada. So if you don't live close to one of those places, they're coming from much further away than Fox Blocks and Build Block are made 15 miles from me, um, as well as about 14 other places in the country. So there's a lot of <clears throat> chance that these blocks are going to be close to the Nudura, but Nudura has some stuff that other guys don't. So there's always reasoning. But at the price of $5 a square foot, we're going to still keep concrete at about $150 a yard. That's wildly varying. I've heard prices lately at some places, um, you know, that are in the upper 130s. And obviously, you know, a lot of places are up in the $200 range. But the average is going to be around $150 that's gonna keep you at around $240. So honestly, since March, the prices are basically exactly the same. For different reasons in the lumber side, but in the concrete side, everything's very stable. Makes the outer wall about 30% more expensive. On a 2,500 square foot uh, home, you're probably talking about between 10 and $20,000 upgrade um, for that outer wall, depending on you know, which, um, how many corners, all that jazz. I mean, there's a lot of variables, but somewhere between 10 and 20 grand. I still believe that that is beyond worth it. Um, you only get one chance at that. Uh, you will be that $10,000, $20,000, even at our higher interest rates right now, which you got to factor in, will not raise your payment by the amount of savings on just your utility bill. Um, there's also a lot of insurance companies really starting to actually do the actuarial math that losses are significantly lower in storms with ICF than it would be in um, with lumber. And they are starting to have discounts for ICF. Not everybody, you should shop around, absolutely. But all of those things are built in forever. Um, you can always refinance as soon as interest goes down. You can't change the way you built the house. I watched it go on a lot last year um, with people really skimping because of how high lumber was. I mean, just really going back to um, 25, 30 years ago, framing practices to get around some of the zip boards and stuff like that. And I hate to see that. 
I don't know if right now is a great time to build because um, prices are still up. Not on materials. I think you know they've kind of leveled out and, and, and stabilized, but housing prices are still up pretty good. But interest is high right now. But I don't believe that's super permanent. Um, we're not going to, but you're not going to see 2.8, 3.2%, I don't think, anytime soon. But I think that, you know, historical lows of, you know, mid fives and sixes are very much around the corner. So, in my opinion, it's not a bad time to build. Just to give you kind of cost benefit analysis from my own standpoint, as you guys, a lot of you know, I've had a project that I'm trying to get off the ground in Angel Fire, New Mexico. It would be the highest house in New Mexico by elevation right now at 10,600 feet at the top of Angel Fire Ski Resort. And I was supposed to be building it right now this summer. Multiple things went into not doing that. Uh, Dolphin Island pools took a little longer than I thought and kind of ate my lunch time-wise. As far as getting all, I've got a lot of sponsorship opportunities. Guys want to give me block, give me decking, or give me really good deals on those things to promote their products. Because when we build that, it's gonna be one of the coolest builds on, on YouTube for the entire summer and products that we choose to use are going to be, you know, front and center. So we've been, we were in talks with a bunch of companies and those were really, really going well, but I didn't really have time to put all of that together and put it to bed before this summer because we have a very narrow window to get it from digging to under roof with windows before the snow starts again. And if you don't get it dried in, you lose like six months, eight months, because at 10, six, the frost line's like eight feet deep up there and you just don't move much in the winter time. So if you get the windows and doors on, get it closed up and the heat turned on, you can keep working. But I knew I couldn't do that. The last straw that broke the camel's back <clears throat> between, um, you know, materials and trying to decide, but I broke my shoulder obviously in early March and it's still not a hundred percent. It's good enough. I could work now, but it's not good. Um, so anyway, even me, even the probably the biggest proponent for all this technology <clears throat> on the internet, it has occurred to me to at least go back to the drawing board, depending on sponsorships and other stuff, and eliminate some of the concrete floors. I'm going to do that video on literally the analysis and my decision making and see what I do. I'm in a wildfire zone. <clears throat> the outside of the house no question will be ICF. I'm probably going to have base crete or um, something like it as a stucco product on the outside, waterproof, uh, fire resistant, really good barrier. And I'm going to have a concrete roof. I'm going to have light deck or insole deck or am deck, name it. I'm going to have something up there because I'm going to have a fireproof shell. I'm going to also have to have a deck uh, over the garage and the kitchen under the kitchen because I've got a pool. I'm not going to have any lumber or any wood touching that part of the house. But I could eliminate probably 5,000 square feet of light deck or insole deck by going lumber. And I, I suspect right now that's a big difference. Um, you know, and, you know, dollars, dollars and cents matter. And I don't know that that's a huge sacrifice. Um, I really want to go all concrete if I can swing it. Uh, but we'll, we'll see and we'll get into that. But the big things on the outer wall, where, you know, right now you're, you know, 10, 20 grand more, 30% more on the wall only. You know, the things you can't, to get build out of a wood wall. Thermal bridging. I'll post a video right here about thermal bridging. It's really annoying. You can't get around it. I don't care if you have an R40 wall. Your studs are an R5, R6. And if you start thinking about a stud every 16 inches or, you know, modern framing practices, they'll go to 24 inches to minimize it. But if you stack up all the studs on a 250 foot perimeter house, you'll have 16 feet of wood. That's not insulation. That's wood, which is not a very good insulator. Um, you know, it's just like a burners, uh, you know, just like slats on a grill. You might have really good insulation, but those bridges add up on the sunny side of the house. You're losing a lot of thermal ICF is obviously a hundred percent, you know, no thermal bridging. So anyway, um, I think we'll wrap that video up right now. I've got a bunch of cool content coming with, I got a, I've got an auto cover. I know a lot of you are bugging me to get that out. I'm trying to just send you guys little clips because I want to, I got another auto cover going in and there's a few things I want to reshoot and do different because that one's really going to be better than the instruction manual when I get it done. Um, as well as a couple pool tours um, that we got coming up. Obviously we have training in less than two weeks, August 10th. So I got a lot going on the first half of this month and then I think things will start to settle down um, and I will start getting some really good, uh, good, good content out to you guys going into fall. I will see you guys next week.